Hello viewers, Super GT here. Recently I competed in a kart meeting at Wilton Mill. Now this was in response to my awful showing at the last round of the UKC at Shennington. That round went awfully. We wanted this one to go a lot better. For that reason, going into this weekend, we've got a brand new kart, a brand new chassis. So in this video, I wanted to bring to you the whole weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, how the testing went and how the racing went and just show you the progression throughout the weekend. Now, a lot of people are asking why I didn't get a Lando cart, the LN cart. That cart's only been announced, it's not actually released just yet. So hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on it soon. Okay, so Friday, practice. I turn this into a three day weekend. Normally with club meetings, you just do Saturday and Sunday. So you practice Saturday, you race Sunday. I wanted to do Friday as well. Because this is a new cart, I wanted to make sure the cart felt fine, it felt comfortable. And the one thing I was also trying to do this weekend was just build my overall fitness for karting, seeing as it was five weeks since I was last in a cart. So, this, actually, this cart actually felt very comfortable. If anything, crazily enough, it felt more comfortable than my previous cart. The seating position was fine. The steering wheel position was dead on. Pedals felt fine. So everything actually felt really good very quickly. So that was very encouraging. We didn't have to worry about that and make any setup changes in terms of the positioning or anything. We could just get straight out there, work on our driving and see if we could build our pace going towards race day on Sunday. So for a bit of background here, I'm with Dan Holland Racing. I'm in senior Rotax and we are on the EOS chassis. And for these Friday practices, it's a fair mix of ability, fair mix of classes as well. So I'm out in the senior category. And on a Friday, because there's not too many people that turn up, um, they, they batch you together um, with all the other senior drivers. So there's a, me there's a mix of classes, there's a mix of, um, of ability out there. Um, but really I just have to focus on myself, just try to make sure that the cart feels fine and that I'm getting quicker and quicker. So this first session went just fine. Um, coming up behind this, uh, another senior Rotax driver here. But this was going to be the end of the first session. And it pretty much went exactly to plan. The cart felt fine. No problems to report at all. In fact, it felt very nice to drive. And uh, therefore, we just we bring the cart in. Now, we can make a couple of small setup changes. We're on very old tyres here. And uh, we come out for, for the uh, second session. So just trying to build upon what we did in that first session, pretty much. And as I said, a mix of carts. We're going to go past the next 30 driver here, just flying up the inside. Quite a rude little lunge there, especially given it's only Friday practice. But um, just kind of setting the tone for the weekend that we're going to go, we're going to go in hard, go aggressive, and do our best to uh, move forward. So as I said, a mix of ability here, a couple of different car uh, classes. So going past the next 30 and a road tax, and that cart in front there, number two, is actually a gearbox cart. You don't normally see too many of those here. Um, but very quick in a straight line, as you can see, flying away. So it'd be very difficult to keep up with that cart. But this session was really characterized by racing against a couple of X30s. So I've raced Senior X30 earlier this season. And Senior X30 and Senior Rotax go around Wilton Mill at the same sort of pace, within a few tenths of each other. So even though they're very different in how they handle and how they deliver their power, it was still worthwhile battling with them and just practicing overtaking. And uh, the overtake up at Christmas Corner, that's the main one we're going for there. So going up into Christmas Corner, really getting on the brakes as late as possible, scrubbing off the, uh, the speed in a straight line, and then turning in. Uh, so we're going to run this lap here, following uh, Nathan Amos, who's a senior X30 driver. Just going to try and catch up with him over the course of this lap. And one of the main techniques I was trying to work on on this day was, was my braking. Uh, Fortunately enough, I had Reese Hunter as my driver coach for this weekend. And he is actually the, the British champion in senior Rotax this year. So he's basically the best driver in the country in a senior Rotax. So he knows what he's talking about. And uh, we're going to use as much of his advice as possible. It's really good to have a very good driver telling you what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. And Reese Hunter will tell you if you're doing it wrong, let me tell you. And if you're watching Kai, I just want to say that Reese is the better hunter brother. Confirmed. 100% fact right there. 
But anyway, you see here we've caught up with the back of Nathan. Now we're going to try and look for a move. Now, yes, it is only practice, but it's always good just to get out there with other carts, get in the mix, practice your overtaking, just get back into the feel of what it's like to be behind the wheel, going past people, overtaking, being consistent, and it's all, it all is valuable. Every person I've spoken to this season has just said how, how seat time is the most important thing. If you're, if you're not practicing, if you're not in the cart, if you're not in the seat, then that's not a good thing. You need to be out there as much as possible. And you see they're just really hooking up with Christmas Corner very nicely. I think this is the best I've taken it all year. This is a track I've driven a fair amount this season, this year, in this cart. But um, just, that's probably the best I've taken Christmas Corner like, all year. So getting a lot better and more comfortable in the brakes. So that was the second session. A good little session that, catching up with a couple of X30 drivers, going past them fairly easily. Um, but the main thing, main problem there is that they're not senior Rotax drivers which is obviously the drivers that we're going to be racing against. So we bring the car into the workshop, a couple of changes, put some more fuel in, and then we're ready for session number three. Now, session number three, not too much to report in this one. I went out on my own. I uh, went out first, went out early. Of course, you can always practice your warming up. Now, the main thing I wanted to work on in this session was my line through one and two. There was some traffic to contend with here. So, uh, is it cart number 95 getting us? Not the smoothest exits there. So we'll send up the inside into the left hander here. Now, I wanted to get turn one and two right. Here it is, launching the curb early, and you see I went in a little bit too hot into turn two. But Reese was telling me about getting in towards the curb of one quite early, not being too late on the steering. And I think that was working. Um, so, you see here, just, just practicing that technique through one carrying the speed through two really important corner because it leads onto this back straight into Christmas the best overtaking opportunity on the lap so it's really crucial that you get that corner right otherwise you get overtaken if you get it right you can overtake the car in front so that was session number three not too much to report there bring the car in and it was feeling good we're down to a low 45 lap time by this point like 45 to that kind of time we go out for session number four now in this session I've, I went out directly behind number 89 and that's deliberate because number 89 uh, is another driver in senior Rotax and let me just move my mouse quickly I just wanted to I wanted to go out behind him because as um, as you're building into a weekend you want to find other drivers in your class your category who you might be racing against on the race day so you can compare how quick you're going to another driver. You have a direct barometer of how quick you are. Because no matter how fast you might think you're going, you might feel really comfortable, you might feel like you're going really well, and then you actually compare yourself to your competition, and then it turns out you're actually a couple of tenths off. So it was a good idea just to get out behind him here. He's the only other senior Rotax, like really comparable senior Rotax driver, so I thought, okay, let's, let's just follow him. See if, we, see if we're quicker, see if he's quicker, see what's what. And um, it was a good practice session. Um, just building into the weekend, just working out your pace, seeing where you're at, and then, and also just simulating what it might be like in a race, just being behind someone, trying to overtake possibly. So we're just making our way through the through the traffic here, going down the hill into Ashby, puts up the inside. You have to follow through. You see, every pretty much every every overtake he went for, I followed him in, so that he's never got a cart between us. There's, um, so there's never a gap, basically. I just always follow him in. And that's something you're always um, trying to trying to do in racing and karting. If the car ahead goes for a move, follow them in, overtake with them. So often you'll lose two positions if you get overtaken. So I've given him a bit of a gap here, as you can see. Just let him get a little bit of a, a margin, maybe half a second or a few tenths. That gives me a bit of a run to try to catch up with him now, rather than being right on his tail. So we call this just being in the chase. Uh, it's always a bit easier, I think, being behind someone to try and hunt them down. You you get a bit of, you get an extra 10%. Um, of course you get the slipstream benefit, but you just get a little bit extra mentally knowing that you're trying to hunt someone down. And is it, it is a bit easier as a reference when they're going to break in zones. You can just break a tiny bit later than them and try to gain on them that way. Over the course of this lap, we're about the same. I think I caught up with him on the brakes there into the boot and as we round out the final corner on this lap, I'd say I gained a tiny amount 
not a huge amount, but let's see if we can gain on this lap a bit more. Through turn one and two, fairly tidy, using the extra concrete on the left, which you're allowed to do. And on the brakes here, into Christmas, we definitely gain. So you can see how much closer we are now. So I was feeling comfortable on the brakes. This was one of my weaknesses all year, not relying enough on the front end of the car. So you really get on the brakes very hard in a straight line. It builds up the grip on the front and then you turn. Now here he hesitated. He didn't go for the move on the back marker. And I went on the move on, on him instead. And this is a crucial lesson in karting, which is if you don't go forwards, generally you'll go backwards. It's, often you don't stay where you are. Um, so if you come up behind a slower cart, you kind of need to make progress quickly before the guys behind get impatient. So, you know, if you've got the opportunity to, to move forward, you should just move forward, typically. Uh, so we're, we're feeling comfortable in this session. That was our main competitor for Friday practice. I mean, there's, there's only one other driver, really, that we could truly compare ourselves to. But it was good news that we were quicker. Now, I brought the cart in early. I was feeling a bit of strain on my neck because of how long I'd been out of the cart. You'd be amazed how sort of quickly you lose your fitness and form in karting. So I bought the cart in early. I was conscious that I had two more days of racing and I didn't want to overdo it too soon. So I was bringing the cart just a couple of minutes in earlier than I could have done. So just to make sure that I didn't completely wear out my neck for race day. So I was just very conscious of that fact that the fitness wasn't absolutely on point. But um, we move on to Saturday then. Now Saturday, again, another practice day. But on Saturday, as you can see across the road there, much more cars. And this is all senior Rotax now. So pretty much everyone that's going to be racing on the Sunday will be practicing on the Saturday. So on the Friday, we didn't have much chance to really gauge ourselves against other Rotax drivers, apart from that final session. But now we've got, well, a plethora of carts all senior Rotax carts so we can really get in the mix here and try to compare ourselves and get in, get in a bit of a battle there's Harry Holland going through very quick driver goes for the move I try and overtake him immediately back so it's good just to get into a mix with other drivers we find ourselves here behind number 28 Joshua Valance and he's going to go for the move here once again as he goes for it we're going to try and nip in as well it was quite late I wasn't right behind him but I still managed to get that move done so it's good practice for the for the race day. You know, when the cart's ahead, if you go for that move, you've just got to nip in there as well, follow them through, and you'll make good progress through the pack. Especially if you can uh, tag onto the back of another driver who's who's fast and is making lots of moves. I went for the move on Joshua there and moved up position maybe a lap or so later, up behind number 37. And this is an example of not quite making the moves work. So I went for a half move there, didn't work. And again, another sort of half move there wasn't really close enough. So I'm just thinking if this was race day and I've failed two attempts there, I could have very easily have gone backwards instead. People behind me maybe getting a bit impatient. So through turns one and two, it's got to get this right, get in the slipstream, make a good run up back straight. There was a yellow flag, but there was a green flag. We're going to go for a late move and just get to the apex first. You just cut them off from the apex and get that move done. Again, still working on the braking. Uh, Joshua Valance comes back through here. So you've always got to take note of that. I went past this guy earlier, but then he's come back at me. So you're thinking, okay, are my pressures right? If you go too high on the pressure, your cart is good at the start, it's not as good at the end. Um, maybe he, you know, who knows? The setup is different. He's running different tires, I don't know. But as soon as anyone fast goes through, you just got to follow them, work out what they're doing. Um, see if there's anything that I, I'm doing wrong. He's very quick through that section and he seems to be gaining just sort of a little bit on every corner. Could be down to tyres, but it could be just down to ability, who knows. Um, but that's the end of that session, end of session number one. It wasn't too bad of a session, it was just, just to get out there, get in the mix, and get a couple of overtakes done. We move on to session number two. So, this one was a really fun session, this one was really good. Now, as I said earlier in the video, you kind of want to go out in a group a lot of the time, and this is what we do. So a lot of people wait for each other to go out, of the car going backwards there. So all the carts will wait for each other and then they all go out in a group. You can see here there's a train of maybe 10 carts and this is just really good simulation practice for the race day because it's going to be like this in the race. It's going to be close. It's going to be frenetic action. So you need to make sure you're familiar with what it feels like. So we go for a move up at Christmas. 
Number 59 there going for the move. Gets two positions done. We don't quite manage to follow him through. Oh, well, we do actually, eventually. And again, he goes for a move here, and I'm not quite close enough to jump in with him there. So uh, we couldn't quite get the move done alongside him. So that's uh, Jamie Rogers there, number 59. Um, a winner of one of the previous Walton Mill Club meetings earlier in the year. So presumably fast guy. So to be anywhere near him, to be competing, to try to get close to him, that, that's always a good sign. So of course, as I said, we're always trying to work out how quick we're going. And Saturday's the perfect day to do that because everyone's out there. Everyone who's going to be racing is out there on this day. Now, it took me a couple of laps, but we did manage to catch up here. He didn't quite, a he wasn't able to go for the move on this car up ahead. So if you catch up with someone slower and then you stay behind them too long, you know, every corner you stay behind them, you're losing time if they're slower than you. So you can see I'm quite quickly catching up with him. And I just, this is a, a good example of immediately going for a move, just late on the brakes into the boot and just get to the apex first, cut him off from the apex and you get the overtake done. So that's a good example of just getting the move done as soon as you get up to someone. Now we're going to try and overtake number five here, getting a good run on the exit, tuck into the slipstream as much as possible. You can see how much of an effect it has down the back straight, send up the inside, and then we move up a position. Well, it's not a position really, it's only a practice, there's no actual position. But you know what I mean. And to Ashby. By this point of the day, just feeling comfortable, by, by this point of the weekend, just feeling comfortable on the brakes. And I think I was beating quite a lot of people with my braking performance. It was perhaps mid-corner that I wasn't quite where I needed to be. So we move on to the next session now. And uh, cart there, not quite making it out. So once again, we find ourselves in a, in a, a little bit of a battle. And we had a nice little bit of a space here to try to catch up and get into a bit of a chase. Try to, ca uh, try to catch up with these carts. Number 22 gets run wide, so we're going to capitalise on that. And I think these practice sessions kind of show if you go, if you start going backwards in a pack, you kind of get preyed upon very easily and everyone wants to go past you because they see you as a weakness. They see your weakness and they'll go past you. So we're going to go past number 12, lunge up the inside, get to the apex first, get the move done. A lap later, up behind Jamie Rogers once again, trying to get into the toe. So we've got a good slipstream here. We're going to pull out late up the inside, boom, and we get the move done. Now, he went for the insta reply here. Wasn't, perhaps wasn't too happy about that. Goes, goes for the move down here. This just shows you it's kind of, it's, uh, it's hard racing, you know, just rubbing pod to pod there, side to side. And you've got to be careful uh, when you're being overtaken that you don't get run off completely because it's kind of fair game to do that. When you go for a move, it's just like running people wide. It's just, that's just how it is pretty much in this, in this racing. So you've got to be careful for that. We, uh, we've got all the work to do once again, trying to overtake number 12 and 59. We've got the inside into Ashby. And then we try to catch up once again on the brakes here. Taking a nice line, and I think I've taken a couple of tenths out of him there in that line alone. Lap later, or the end of that lap, or the next lap, once again, trying to get the move done up the back straight into Christmas Corner. So this is a good session, just um, good pace, feeling comfortable, and um, just getting some overtakes done, getting familiar for race day. So the preparation has been good. Reese Hunter's advice, really, really good all weekend about how to break and the lines to take and um, just not being too clever with... A, a problem I had was turning in too late and he said, you know, just get into the corner early, especially turn one and going into the boot. I was, I was turning in too late. But um, we, made up set, uh, we made some setup changes. This is the final session now. We made, up, uh, we made some setup changes. We're on a better engine. We're on better tyres by this point. But uh, this setup change, it gave a bit more rear grip which sounds like a good thing, but for me, I kind of like the back end to slide a tiny bit and I couldn't quite get it to do that in this session. So you can see I was getting overtaken quite a lot. Um, I was maybe just a couple of tenths off where I needed to be. And so I'm maybe in the mid 45s uh, at this point where I need to be sort of low 45s. Um, but still in the fight, I'm not completely getting, uh, getting beaten, still getting some overtakes done, as you can see. And then down the hill here, we're going to get overtaken once again. No, we're not. There's a bit of contact there with number 54. There's Archie Elliott. Yellow flag. And then 28. Is he going to go for a move? If he does, I'm going to try and follow him in. And we do. So 
there we go, perfect example of that. Uh, so this is the final session, wasn't quite the best session, not the greatest way to end the day. Uh, once again, my neck was pretty done by this point, but this is an important thing to note here. We go onto the weigh bridge and weigh ourselves with the car. The weigh limit is 162. I have been overweight all year because of obviously how obese I am. Um, but this time around I'm 163, which is absolutely perfect. So that's a good way to move on to Sunday, race day. Now, you're not allowed to record GoPro footage on race day at these club meetings, which is one of the reasons why I do UKC, because they do allow it. But we're going to move on to our first race of Sunday. Now, we, you have three races. You start one at the back, one in the middle, one at the front. Our first race, we're going to be starting at the back, P26. So a lot of work to do. You can see just how big the pack is there. So let's see how much damage we can do from P26 out of 29, I believe it is around the first couple of corners. Now you can see just how congested it is at the beginning of this race, really, really busy. It's kind of savage out there. I need to be moving forward. That is me, for those who don't know, bright yellow slash greenish car. It's yellow, fluoro yellow, orange helmet. So it's fairly easy to see me, luckily. It's got quite a bright paint job on the car, or livery on the car. Getting a couple of moves done early here. Probably gained about three positions on, three or four, positions on this first lap. Top two beginning to move away. And as you can see here, I'm at the back of this very long train. So by this point, 19th, I think. Steve Brown there, number 90 in the quadrant livery. And we're gonna try and move through this pack as quickly as possible. A lap later, I had moved up three of three more positions, gained quite a few positions there. And then down the hill here, we're gonna gain another one up the inside of number 18, get another move done to gain one more position. So we're about 15th-ish by this point. Sam Light there, number 15, getting a poor run. We're going to send up the inside, get the move done nice and early, nice and quick, to get the work done as early as possible. Another move done there into the Ashby hairpin on the brakes. Oh, my God, this guy uh, trying to exit the Wilton Mill premises backwards up the grass bank. Obviously not happy with the other driver there. And, uh, yeah, unfortunate for him. By this point here, four minutes to go left in this race. And it's a seven minute plus one lap race, by the way. So it's, it's only about 10 laps. It's quite quick. And um, by, uh, oh, who's this? Alfie Brooks, I think that is. Very wide onto the grass. We gain one more position. Just behind me there, number 99 in the orange car, orange suit, Nathan Chafer. We both started towards the back. We've both gained a lot of positions. He's a very quick guy. So I was conscious that I've got him behind me. He's very fast. I need to get past the traffic as quick as possible. As I was saying earlier in the video many times, if you don't, if you fail to make that forward move, the guy behind you is going to go for the move on you. So I need to make the move here, ideally on number 12. We're going to go for it into Ozier's, get the move done. And the good thing is here is that uh, Nathan wasn't able to follow me through on that move. He tries to move a little bit later there. It doesn't quite work out for him. So I've got a bit of breathing room now. So I've got a cart between myself and Nathan. Try and pull away. There's a bit of a gap to, uh, between myself and Rob Ellis, the car in front. I'm in the top 10 now. So this has been a really good start, moving up more than 15 positions. And um, onto the brakes into Christmas. Nathan not able to go for that move on number 12 just yet. So every corner he's stuck behind him, I'm pulling away. But then he goes for a move here. It doesn't quite work out for him, though. Doesn't quite, he wasn't able to fully commit to it. And you see they're battling behind. And I was able just to stretch out a bit of a margin. So it gave me a bit of breathing room going into the last couple of laps of the race, knowing that I didn't have someone immediately behind me. So I could just focus on going forward. And this is the point of the meeting, the point of the weekend where you're going to set your fastest lap pretty much because it's the first race. You're on fresh, brand new tyres for this first race. And I was able on this race to set a 44.89, which is actually my fastest ever lap around Wilton Mill. So the preparation was really good and the lap time was showing it. The fact that we've set our personal best ever lap time around Wilton Mill. So we're getting quicker and quicker around this track. But that was race one. Moving up to 10th by the end of the race, the front of the pack kind of spread out. So it's kind of hard to gain more positions in the second half of that race. But uh, there was going to be one more gain of position because they check your front nose cone for the drop nose penalty. And if your front nose has been smashed in too much, you do get a five second added on to your race time. Number 27 there, Harry Holland had a five second penalty. So we gained one more position. We ultimately finished in ninth. 
So that was a really good result. Moving forward a lot of positions, that's all you have to do in that, in that front start, sorry, in that rear start race. We move on to heat number two. Now heat number two, this was going to be our middle start. So where are we? We are starting P11, as you can see. So right in the mix of everything. This is probably the most dangerous start because you're right in the middle. There's so much that can go wrong when you're in the middle of the pack. So warming up the tyres as much as possible, really getting that, that heat into them. You only have one lap, or really about half a lap to get the heat in. So you've got to be good about it. You'll be very quick about it. So race two begins. Let's see what we can do here. Immediately I try and get to the right-hand side, which gives me the inside for turn two, and therefore a better run up the straight here. So you can still see me in the middle of the pack there, trying to go around the outside. A couple of carts get run wide there, so we gain a position or two from that, and we move up into seventh by the end of lap of one. Uh, number one. Now off camera, I lost three positions on lap two, uh, or, th or lap three, I think it was. Uh, I just did not get into this race as quickly as I should have done. I, I just wasn't quite as uh, as consistent as I should have been. Uh, my first couple of laps were just a bit off. And as I said, again, many times, if you don't go forward, you go backwards. So because I wasn't quite on it, I got overtaken. I went up to seventh, back to tenth. I'm still ahead of where I started, so it's not a complete disaster just yet. So down the hill into Ashby. A bit of fighting up ahead. That's Nathan Schaefer up the inside there. So he started alongside us. So he's a couple of positions ahead now. And because of that fighting, the gap that was in front of me has closed up. So I've caught up to the back of number 23, Tommy Edmonds. And on the back straight here, we're going to go for the move, which is good because the cart behind me was about to go for a move on me. So I pretty much had to do that. But then coming down the hill here, the unfortunate event of the day, Tommy goes up the inside, and it's one of those where he was on the inside, I was ahead, perhaps I could have yielded. It's just one of those, and I end up on the grass to lose about six or seven positions. So a bit frustrating. Um, so this race, the momentum really wasn't with us. The first race, we moved forward so many positions. This one just couldn't get into the race as quickly as possible. Towards the end, I made a couple of positions back. That's Joshua Valance, number 28. We battled with him on the Saturday. And by the end, uh, Chafe actually finished in third. He started next to us on the grid. So he finished third. I ended up finishing, I think it was 13th in the end. So it wasn't the greatest race. Uh, it wasn't a complete disaster. At least we didn't finish at the back or anything. So it could have gone worse, but it definitely could have gone a lot better. Now, we're supposed to have three heats. We didn't do our third heat because there was a very bad incident in one of the Mini X30 races, a driver called Jensen Pugh involved in a pretty bad accident where he, he ended up stationary on the track and someone else hit him side on at a very high speed and he ended up with a broken left femur, so broken left leg. Very bad incident, had to have the fire brigade there to cut him out of the cart and uh, air ambulance take him away to, to hospital. So just wishing Jensen a very swift recovery. Hopefully he can get back out in a cart very, very quickly indeed. So this brings us on to the final. Now, because we missed our third heat, our third heat was supposed to be the race where we started in fourth. So we missed out on potentially a good result there, which is a bit frustrating. But still, we qualified in 10th on the grid. So that's actually not too bad, given that we missed, on our, we missed out on our front start. So this is the main race of the whole weekend. This is what it's all been uh, building up to. Full start first time around. The back of the pack wasn't close enough to the front. It's a bit disjointed, but we go around again. We try and get the start dead right. So second time around, the start is fine. Now again, try and spot me in the pack. Kyle Dunford in the lead there, actually getting a really good, good uh, launch, getting a good hole shot. I go around the outside of Rob Ellis at Christmas, I gain a position there, and then if you can see me coming down the hill into Ashby, I got the inside and gain another position on Tommy Edmonds. And I gain a couple, I gain another position. So up a couple of positions already. Now Tommy Edmonds tries to go around the outside here. That was never going to happen. Just have to run him wide, make sure that does not happen at all. And uh, by this point at the end of the first lap, so one, two, three, four, five, six, we're in seventh. So we're in a decent position here. And we're just trying to settle into this race a lot better than we did for Heat 2. Heat 2, I just did not settle into the race. I don't know what was going on in my mind. But obviously it wasn't fully focused on driving properly. Uh, so a couple of laps later, it's a 10 minute race, by the way, 10 minutes plus one lap. That's Jamie Rogers going up the inside of Nathan Chafer. So we're in a little bit of a group here. Um, Rogers, Chafer, 
Holland, and then myself. Um, over the course of the next couple of laps, Rogers had really good pace and he moved away. We battled with him a fair amount on the Saturday, but he had really good pace on race day, so he began to move away. And you see here, he caught up with the top three. And this is the battle we were looking at. The top four now began to really fight. And as soon as they start doing this, we're just eyeing this battle up from a bit of a distance behind. Uh, so Holland, Chafer and myself, we're in fifth, sixth and seventh at this point. We're just watching this battle thinking, please keep fighting because we are catching up very quickly. So with just that one lap of fighting, um, you see the top seven, the top four became a battle in the top seven or top eight even. So now it's a big train. Dunford got away slightly at the front. Holland actually went, he got run wide there at the at the boot. So went up into sixth position over the line with four minutes to go. Um, down the back straight, I didn't get a good run through turn two. Holland comes back up the inside. I went semi-defensive, not defensive enough. Holland back up the inside. So I'm back down to seventh. Just make sure I don't lose another position here. So when you lose a position, you've got to be conscious that you might lose another one. And uh, number 75, Jason Neil, uh, Jaden Neil Holder gets run wide onto the grass, kind of what happened to me in heat two. And he loses a lot of positions as a result. I think maybe about six or seven positions. So we gain one up into sixth by this point. And uh, with four minutes to go, it's a very close battle for second. Kyle Dunford in the lead. He's got maybe about half a second or a second advantage by this point. And we're just going to try and make our way through this group if possible. Four laps, uh, sorry, four minutes to go. Roughly about six or seven laps. Holland up the inside of Chafer just in front of me. So we've got Nathan Chafer just in front, number 99, orange car, orange suit. We've been with him pretty much the whole weekend. We've battling with him quite a lot. And we were actually fairly evenly matched. So it's a, it's a good fight. It's a good battle here. And then a couple of laps later, the incident which changes the race here, um, Harry Holland onto the grass Chafer goes through I go through and Holland actually ends up losing maybe like nine positions maybe ten drops right down the uh, right down that pack and loses quite a lot of positions um, as a result I'm in fifth it's Dunford Rogers then Hughes there in third and they've got quite a bit of a gap as you can see so the race has become a bit more stretched as people have begun to fight so I'm in fourth, uh, sorry, I'm in fifth just behind Nathan Chafer, who's in fourth. A very close-knit group behind. So if I start making any mistakes or go for any rash moves, there's a very good chance I lose quite a lot of positions here. So it's got to be really careful about any any sort of move we make at this point of the race. We have not long left to go. If I, if I drop five positions, it's going to be very difficult to gain them back because there's not many laps left. Now, we were again eyeing up that battle for the lead. Just like earlier in the race where they started fighting and losing time, we were hoping that would happen again because at this point in time, we're a little bit off that battle for the podium. And you see there's a, probably about a second and a half between us, uh, between fourth and third. So we're not quite close enough. But it's this lap where things actually begin to change. I think it's this lap or is it the next lap? So you can see the top three at the front of the shot there, very close in contention with each other. As we go down into Ogiers, I'm not quite close enough to go for this move on Nathan. I felt like I was quicker, but I just couldn't get close enough in the places that it really mattered. So I wasn't able to really go for a move. So I was kind of okay sat behind him. But ideally, I didn't want to wait too long because, as you can see, many carts just behind. And they would try and go for the move on me if I didn't make a move going forward. Now, this is the lap where things begin to change. Dunford gets caught by Rogers. And then you've got Alex Hughes just behind there in third. So Rogers presumably is going to look for this move at some point on this lap because there's only one minute to go. There's probably maybe three laps, including this one. So there's not long left in this race at all. Uh, Dunford goes defensive there. But then this is where things change because coming into the boot, Rogers looks for the move and doesn't quite commit to it. And they end up going over the top of each other. Rogers spins out. Hughes takes the lead and then... It's now, um, it's now Chafer in second and I'm in third. So I've suddenly found myself on the podium out of nowhere. And the pace is there. We're in for, with a good shout. And I potentially should have gone for a move here up at Christmas Corner for second. Decide to stay behind and try and fight to get a really good clean move done. 
So I've got to make sure I get this move done because, as you can see, we've got um, uh, Brooks just behind, Alfie Brooks just behind, and if I don't get this move done, and uh, he's, he's potentially going to go for the move on me. I don't get a good exit here. As you can see, Chafer just drives off. Um, Brooks gets very close, and he goes for the move. I try to ride it around the outside, and it doesn't quite work. And he's able to get the switch back on the exit. So I'm down into fourth. I don't get a good run here. And as I go to the right, um, Jaden Neil Holder goes up the inside, nips up the inside into the apex of turn one, and gets another good move done. So I'm down into fifth all of a sudden. And I had a good shot for second, and suddenly I'm in fifth. So it just kind of shows you, the mo you have to go for that move, otherwise you're going to go backwards. And it's happened. We've still got this lap and another one, a bit of contact on the apex of Ashby. And it's all hotting up now. You see just how many carts there are in this fight for third position. Looks like Chafer's got away in second. And uh, oh, there's a big battle there, a big uh, collision up at Christmas Corner between t the two novice drivers, obviously blaming each other for whatever happened there. Very close battling here. On to the final lap then. Can we recover this podium through turn one and two? Look how close it is for this battle. Very close behind. I don't quite get the, an ideal run, but there's a yellow flag here. There's a yellow flag because of that crash that we just saw. So there was no chance to overtake into Christmas Corner. Is there a chance down the hill? I'll go slightly defensive, look for the move. Wasn't quite able to get it. So half a lap left to go. And I'm conscious I want to, I still want to go forward, but I also don't want to lose a position here because fifth would be a decent result on our first ever senior Rotax uh, club round at Wilton Mill. It would be a pretty good showing against drivers who have done this meeting all of this year and maybe years before as well. Uh, Alex Hughes wins. Chafer comes through in second. We end up in fifth. And even though it was disappointing because we went backwards, we were in third at one point. I still, I'm still very happy with how the weekend went. Uh, we wanted to make sure the new cart was fine. I wanted to improve my fitness. I felt good in terms of fitness on the Sunday, so that was fine. And it was a bonus to get a good result. So everything we wanted to do this weekend, we achieved. And I think it, it was just a really good weekend overall, building up to the final round of UKC at uh, Warden Law. So... I achieved everything I wanted to. To finish fifth, I think it was a good result and I was really happy with it overall. So obviously a big shout out, Dan Holland Racing, uh, Reese Hunter, really good driver coaching, really helped out all of this weekend. Alfred Lawrence on the Spanners doing a good job as ever. And you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Something a little bit different. So going through the process of the whole weekend of all the onboards. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, UKC final round will be uh, out very soon so look out for that get yourself subscribed if you're not already um, but thank you so much for watching i'll catch you next time goodbye <laughs>